when I saw not just what happened with Robert Sala, but the immediate reaction from 49er fans, I got interested. Mm. Not at the idea that Robert Sala will suddenly be the defensive coordinator in 48 hours in Seattle. That's not happening. I don't think he's going to be the defensive coordinator at any point for the 49ers this year. Um, in fact, I think he has already publicly stated he is going to go on vacation with his family, take a breath, and he will see you at the next hiring round. Not in the aisles, but he will see nice. you at the next hiring round for coaches, which will be after this year. And, oh, by the way, and we'll play it for you in a little bit, Kyle Shanahan literally about a half hour ago gave a full vote of confidence in Nick Sorensen saying absolutely nothing negative whatsoever when people were asked about his performance. What's interesting to me about the 49er fan reaction of immediately going, ooh, let's get Sala back, is not that he's going to come. It's, it's because of what he represents. Robert Sala represents one thing beyond a successful defense, which I would argue most people, most 49er fans, didn't even really deeply know about Robert Sala until Nick Bosa showed up. People started picking off passes. He started running the stairs every day, and everybody, it became a thing. And next thing you know, he's a head coach in New York. But Robert Sala represents something to 49er fans, and that is fire. He represents fire. He's up and down the sideline. He's in people's faces. He's showing energy. He's doing what we want a defensive coordinator to do, which is hop around and freak out and go crazy and throw things and slap guys on the helmet and headbutt somebody with, with, with a bare forehead. That's what we love. I don't know that that actually means you're a great defensive coordinator, but it doesn't hurt on TV, and he does that. And the reason I think so many 49er fans immediately wanted him back is that he represents something that appears to have been lost with the 49ers right now. Maybe they just aren't very good. Time will tell. But for now, I look at the 49ers, and I think many share this opinion, and they look like they're not going all out. They look like they're coasting. They look like they're arrogant. They look like they think they can dial up a win whenever they want. They sound when they lose to the Rams and Cardinals like they're like, I can't believe we lost to the Rams and the Cardinals. We don't do that around here. These kinds of statements, you feel like Niners. You're playing like the facial expressions of Brandon Crawford and Brandon Belt. You look like you're just like, eh. What'd you say about that fumble? What was Trent Williams doing when Jordan Mason fumbled? He's chilling. Chilling. I don't think people are in the mood for chilling. Right. You're two and three, and you lost the Super Bowl last year, and the Chiefs are five and zero. Oh. So why are you feeling tired, slow, and complacent? Yeah, tired, slow, and complacent. And that's whether it's fair or not. That's why we want Robert Sala back. Well, and you want Robert Sala back because you remember what it was like when he was here that, uh, you know, three years ago or four years ago, 2020, when you were fifth in the league in yards per play and you were much better in points allowed. And so now you're in a spot where your team is 20th in yards per play. And I know it's still early. It's only five games in. And so we can still small sample it if you want, but you are in 20th place in yards per play allowed. Your defense is not good. It looks slow. Now you don't have Hufanga. You don't have Greenlaw. Armstead is gone. And you don't have a lot of real game wreckers on defense. And teams don't come in here and they fear you anymore. And you don't have the same level of hitting that you used to have. And so defensively, you're not seeing a real, a real imposing or... Yep vaunted or dangerous or threatening defense. You don't get a lot of takeaways. Nick Bosa with a great pick on his own, but your secondary is mediocre. Your pass rush is almost non-existent and your poor linebacker, the one guy who you know is out there trying to do everything on a bum leg. Coaching or personnel? It's both. It's both, but, okay, I, but I think it's easier bigger, who, gets, who gets a bigger piece of the personnel. Okay. I agree personnel. with you. I agree with you. But you look at coaching and when you have Robert Sala, who's suddenly free, everyone thinks about, like you're talking about, well, if we, we just had Robert Sala, we get back to that all gas, no break scheme, and you can get back to a defense that's out there rocking people and wrecking games. And I don't know if it's that easy. No, it's not. When you have a totally different personnel group that you have now 
You've got a lot of younger guys in the back end. You've got one linebacker that you really want to rely on, maybe one and a half with D. Winters, but Devondre Campbell, nobody wants him on the field. Yadam has struggled. Mooney Ward is not playing at a Pro Bowl level. Uh, Diamondo Lenore has been amazing. Bose has been great. And who else? Like Jordan Elliott, he's been solid. Yeah, Special but I mean, teams with a right. block uh, field goal and, and whatnot. And Floyd's been good at times, but you've not had a real concerted 11-man defensive effort. So the thought would be, well, if we just had Robert Sala, or if we can get D'Amico back, but D'Amico's not free, but Robert is, and you know, you bring Sala back and you put Sorensen back to wherever he was and everything could be better. Um, that to me is more emotional than it is X's and O's. Agreed. I agree yeah. with you. Yeah, like then that's what's interesting to me. So Niner fans, is that how you feel? Have the 49ers lost their edge, lost their passion, lost their emotion, lost their fire? All of that. 888-957-9570. The reaction to Robert Sala's availability to me isn't about, hey, he can come fix our X's and O's. It was more about, hey, he could come in here and freaking fire somebody up so that you guys could at least look like you're out there giving it your all. There was a long call to Steiny and Goo. I forget the listener's name. He went into a whole thing, and he was cool about it. He's like, look, I don't know. I'm just watching on TV. But to me, um, they look out of shape. And I was like, wow. I mean, can you imagine now? What a thing to say to a group of NFL football players. You're out of shape. But I know there are people who probably agree. You lose leads late. Um, you, you know, the, the, the heat got to you. Right. I don't know if any of that's true. And I don't think that the 49ers are out of shape. Because in his call, he's like, they never close. You don't close games. And I'm thinking to myself, well, except for the 70% of the games that they win. Um, so obviously there have been games over the last five years that the 49ers close because they've won the good sure, majority of their sure. games. However, I'm not going to argue that it's, an, that it's not an issue, but I just don't think it's that. I don't think it's that they're out of shape. I think that some form of, whether it's complacency, losing your edge, in the back of your mind, thinking that you've got it even when you don't. You know, I think in the back of their mind, if you ask them, do you think you have what it takes to win the division? There's not a one of them that's like, well, of course we do. We're going to snap our fingers and turn it on. It's like when Shaq used to always, in the Shaq-Kobe era, we oh, flip the switch. Don't worry, we'll flip the switch. The Niners have become the NFL flip the switch team, which, let me tell you, is super annoying. No, fans don't want to hear, you'll start trying when it matters, because fans think it matters every single week, and it does. But that's what this represents to me. It's not about the wide nine. It, 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 it's about a complete lack of fire. Well, just close the game is all. I mean, right. that's where, and you, you had that game yesterday or Sunday that you could have closed it if Jordan Mason doesn't fumble, and that's one that you could have closed or fourth and five on a throw that's up for grabs, and you could have knocked it down from Yadam, and you didn't, and so you didn't close. It's more than just one player. It's a team effort, and you can tell me you're going to flip the switch all you want, but – what we've seen from this team is if you're not a home team in the playoffs, you usually don't go to the Super Bowl. Yeah. 